Welcome to another episode of the On the Wars Rebellion channel here. Today from Snowy Fort Davis. It seems I always pick the perfect times for these videos weather-wise. I was sweating like crazy in the summer at the New Mexico side and we're at the kind of moment of a blizzard hitting Texas, West Texas today here at Fort Davis and it's really cold so I'll be very warmly dressed today. <clears throat> what we're gonna do today very quickly is look a little bit at the history of Fort Davis. I'm not gonna walk around probably a lot with the snow here and everything. Uh, give you a little bit of a feeling of what this fort was like during its time of existence. Um, I am standing here at an officer barrack from the uh, 1860s this variants of the fort. We'll briefly look at the ruins of the 1850s version of the fort as well. We'll also uh, very quickly talk about what this fort was used for. It's a new day here at Fort Davis. The snowstorm passed last night and I thought I'd go back for a few minutes and give you some shots here in blue skies and nice weather. Uh, what I really want to go over is, and hope the wind will not impact this too badly, the origins of this fort. The region was taken over in the aftermath of the war with Mexico and at that stage the US military decides to establish a presence in West Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and further west. At this point in 1854, Secretary of War Jefferson Davis, for whom this fort is named, as well as the county, decides to order Percy Fort Smith to establish an outpost here in this region. The initial fort, I'll show some pictures here after this segment, is just a little bit up from the original, uh, from the 1880s fort. There's still some nice ruins out there. It's a little further up the canyon, uh, which actually made it a little bit more vulnerable. But it is in this region where the US military will then protect the movement of people westward to the gold fields of Colorado, where they will look into protecting the settlers that are moving westward. The fort gets abandoned at the start of the war, the rebellion, and Confederate forces take over in this region. It is used as a staging spot between Texas mainland and New Mexico during Sipley's New Mexico campaign. And for the most part, it is very limited in how much resources the Confederate government devotes to this place. Um, after some Mescalero Apache raids in the area, which also had was the reason why the United States had an outpost here. The garrison is increased to 70 men. However, by August 1862, the Confederate government abandons all of West Texas to devote its resources further to the east. And the fort, the original Fort Davis, falls into ruin. And it's only in the aftermath of the war, the rebellion, that the US military returns and establishes a presence here. The fort's buildings that we see behind me 
that are still here or have been restored. U.S. forces returned to Fort Davis in 1867 under Colonel Wesley Merritt. At that time they rebuilt the fort. The buildings that we see here today, and I'll give you some shots after this segment, um, are all built from that time period. The fort was most prominently used by the African American units of the U.S. Army including the 24th and 25th U.S. Infantry and then the 9th and 10th U.S. Cavalry with the cavalry unit stationed here for about 12 years. For times this was the headquarters of those units so there's a lot of officer barracks here there are um, band barracks, quarters for the enlisted man, commissary it is a very important kind of location for the U.S. military in here. On top of that, the fort is tasked. The about 400 man station here at its height have to go after Apache Raiders. Um, they're projecting U.S. Empire into this region in West Texas along the border with Mexico. And of course, once the Apache raiding is over by the 1880s, pacification has taken place, reservations established. The forces in this region will be involved in road construction, repair, um, repairing telegraph lines and the like. And by 1891, due to its remote location, the U.S. military decides that this fort just doesn't have a lot of benefit for the U.S. military anymore and abandons it.